What starts the backswing and how to move the club away in that first initial few feet is really a make or break section for a lot of golfers and can lead to a whole slew of ball striking errors if you don't get the sequence and the pieces of these correct. If you feel like you're struggling with this area of your swing, stay tuned. This video is really going to help. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel guys, Kerry Gray here at the beautiful Joondalup Resort. Before we get stuck in, as always, please go down below, click subscribe, click that little bell so you get notified of all the great content coming your way. On top of that, just a little reminder, I am doing online personalized coaching. If you would like to get your swing reviewed, analyzed, and some individual tuition relative to your current needs and fixing up some of those efficiencies, well, I'm absolutely here to help. If you're interested in that, you can simply click the link in the description below. Alrighty, in today's lesson, we're talking about how to move the golf club away, what body part really starts the backswing, and what you should think about if you're struggling with some errors of where that club is positioned by the first parallel or when the club shaft is level with the ground. Now, relative to whatever level you're at, this may be important, it may not be important. My advice is to go and see your local PGA professional, get them to analyze, and then use this video maybe as a complement to that to really give you a good understanding of exactly where that club should be. Alrighty, so what we've got here today is a yellow alignment rod, and I'm just going to use this as a reference, first of all, of the movement of my body and exactly how that should work. Now, a lot of players, before we get into this, have the understanding that the golf swing is more of a level turn. Now, at the end of the day, the golf ball is played on the ground, so we need some angle to our body, we need some angle to our swing. If you're wondering why, well, you can see that the golf club is built on an angle. So effectively, to use this golf club how it is designed, we need to swing this golf club around our body. And because the ball's on the ground, we have a certain angle to that established at a dress. But first of all, let's talk about golf in a very simplistic fashion. And the reason that a lot of players get their backswing messed up, the reason a lot of players get their backswing and their takeaway in a position which is hard to recover from, is simply a misunderstanding of what actually moves in the golf swing. Is it the hands, is it the arms, is it the body? Body, and then what we actually do from there to get it to the top. So first of all, let's give you a real easy, simple to understand exercise. If I was playing golf out in front of me, the golf club, let's call this level with the ground in line with my belly button. For the most amount of efficiency, I would want to swing this relatively flat around my body in the backswing and in the follow through, and that would deliver a flat strike relative to where I started. Now golf, we play this from down on the ground, so we need some bend from the hips. So if I take this angle here, bend from the hips, let's call that a golf posture. So therefore, using that analogy, if I was standing up straight and we just isolate the movement of my rib cage, and I'm just gonna use this stick as a reference, if I was making that level turn, well, my rib cage would turn level. My hips would turn level. My shoulders would turn level. But seeing once again, as the golf ball is on the ground and I bend forward from the hips, that is going to encourage my hips to turn on a tilt, my rib cage to turn on a tilt, my shoulders to turn on a tilt. Therefore, as I swing back, my whole golf swing would be on an angle relative to how much I bend from my hips to get that efficient strike on the golf ball, getting me that ball first contact, ground second, compression, all the good stuff that you see the pros do. So if I grab this golf club back, and we use that as an understanding once again. If we're out in front, we've got a very rounded motion, but seeing as the ball's on the ground, we need some incline or some angle to our body and our swing to deliver the most amount of efficiency. Well, it's crucial that we get the backswing started in the correct manner. Now, just a little side note before I get stuck in, this is purely the movement of the body that starts the backswing. In fact, there is actually some pressure shifts going on, which is why you see a lot of waggling on the PGA Tour. And what move actually starts the backswing is a pressure shift. Now, I've done another video on this on my channel, so you can go through. It's under the takeaway section, so you can look at that in the playlist, and that will give you a better understanding of what actually starts the backswing. This video here today, specifically talking about the movements of the body. Alrighty, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up, I'm gonna show you a couple of general errors that we see with a lot of players. The first would be too much hips in the backswing. So effectively what they do is they try and create too much turn too early and then that really gets the club moving at an effect and that causes a whole bunch of sequencing issues. Now once again, in a simplistic fashion, the golf club has to move the greatest distance in the golf swing back and through, followed by the hands, the arms, the shoulders, the hips, the legs, the knees, everything else considered. So therefore this here, to a degree, needs to start moving first. And the way that we control that, the way that we get that moving first 
is by a feeling and an understanding of how the rib cage needs to work. Now, at the top of the swing, just as a reference, we're looking for about 90 degrees of shoulder rotation and about 45 degrees of hip rotation. So therefore, if we need to get more rotation of the upper body, just using that as our general reference versus the lower body, we need to ensure that that piece is moving before the lower body. So if I'm setting up to the ball here, to get my upper body moving first, what I wanna feel is the right side of my rib cage, and this is a really great feeling that I use with a lot of players, the right side of my rib cage is moving on the angle that was established at address. So this would be around, bend from the hips, the right side of my rib cage is moving up. Now when I do this, the reason I love this thought, the reason I love this feeling, is that it simply just brings pure awareness to what your upper body is doing. Now what you'll find, it creates a bit of an elastic stretch and your hips will tend to start to move along for the ride as well, which I really like. And so if we just bring total awareness to this right side of the rib cage and we focus on getting that moving first, you'll find that the arms will tend to stay in sync with the body. And this leads to the second big error we see with a lot of players. They get too handsy, they get too armsy. The golf club will start moving out or start moving under. Really at the end of the day, one of the big reasons being is their back arm, the right arm for the right hander is way too active. So we need to control that thing. And the way that we control that thing and we allow the rib cage to create it, we can see that my arms are still structured. So therefore, as I continue to get my right side of my body moving up and back, where well, you can see I'm actually in a very nice structured backswing position that you would see the best players in the world get to. Alternatively, if I turn my hips too much too early, I don't turn them at all, I move my hands out, I move my hands around, I lift my arms, well that starts to create all these funky shapes which as an amateur golfer, not a professional because they're very skillful, as an amateur golfer, we want to tend to try and be a little bit more orthodox. The main reason being is we're not spending hours and hours and hours beating millions of balls to groove in this feeling. We want to try and get the golf club working in as efficient manner as possible to ensure we're getting the most out of our strikes so we can rock up onto the first tee after not practicing all week and hit reasonable shots. And the way that we do that is by improving the sequencing of how the body, the arms and the club all move together. So that's why this takeaway drill is exceptional. When we're in the address position, we're just getting the feeling of the right rib cage lifting back and up, so it's moving on its diagonal. I really like the sensation. It feels like my arms are staying relatively passive. As I do this, I am also noticing that my hips are just naturally turning. We don't want to restrict anything. Golf is an athletic motion. Let's let it all happen. From there, as we do it, right rib cage goes up, and then from there, I just hit some little shots. Now what you'll find, the first couple, it's gonna feel weird. It's gonna feel like your arms aren't doing much, but that's exactly what we want. We wanna remove how handsy that takeaway is. We wanna make sure the backswing, the motion is derived from the rotation of the torso to start it off as we move it back into this first parallel, and that would be our little checkpoint, that when we get the movement of the body back into this frame, we can see that the club is covering the hands. We can see the shaft is relatively pointing at our target line. We've got a bit of movement with the hips. We've got a bit of movement with the torso. And then from there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna checkpoint, a little movement back, and then swing through from there. And you can see those two balls started directly at our target line. So even if you're doing this on course for the first time, just do it as a rehearsal. Really, it doesn't take much. A couple of practice swings, just bringing total awareness to the body part that you're trying to move the most. And I'm sure it'll make a massive difference. So if you've been struggling with the understanding of what actually initiates the backswing, what initiates that takeaway, well, this is an excellent feeling and drill to encourage the right pieces of the body to move first on the right angle to ensure that you're able to get that ball first contact, ground second. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you've got any questions at all, please let me know down below. But until next time, I'm Kerry Gray. Thanks for watching.